What's up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today, we're gonna check out form design and I can, I can guarantee you, if you haven't actually researched what constitutes good form design, then you suck at form design. I, I know this because I personally have reviewed thousands upon thousands, perhaps, of your UI designs that I've seen that you guys have submitted throughout the years. And it's just one of those things that we're not born with having, like understanding what great form design is. So I'm gonna be giving you 10 commandments of good form design. Of course, there's other things you need to worry about as well. And then afterwards, I'm going to show you some real examples that were submitted just last week. And we're gonna point out where their contact forms or their forms in general go wrong. All right, so as always, if you haven't, subscribe and let's get started. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Linode. Now, as a front-end developer or a designer, you know that you need a personal portfolio. And if you use a website builder like Wix or Squarespace, they lack total customization and they lock you into using their platform. But to be a pro, you need to use the tools that the pros actually use. So level up, start building your own projects and your own portfolio on an enterprise level content management system like WordPress or Drupal. Now, real web development sometimes requires knowledge of spinning up servers, managing domain names, and setting up an occasional staging environment. And there's no better or simpler way to learn the ins and outs of hosting your website than with Linode Cloud Hosting. Linode Cloud Hosting makes it as easy as possible for you to deploy a WordPress or Drupal website in seconds with a free Linode one-click app marketplace. So click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get your free Linode account along with $20 of free hosting and all the tools that you need to build enterprise class websites. All right, so here is our first little demonstration. And real, really, my first point here contains two things that are wrong with this particular form setup. And the first thing that's wrong is alignment. As we can see, we have our, our little uh, form heading right here, place your order now. Um, this defines a starting point, a column right here. Then we have first name right here in the, the other label. That starts another point, and then we have another column that starts here, and it just doesn't flow well. Additionally, you should always avoid trying to have your uh, two-column approach when it comes to the label and the input. Uh, in this way, it creates kind of a sort of like a zigzag uh, Z, where you have, you have to scan here, and then here, you scan here, and then here, it's like a Z. Going back, you don't want that. Instead, you want this. All right, so this fixes the alignment issue because everything starts and ends on the same column, essentially, and it also fixes the issue with the Z. Uh, sticking with this simplistic approach where everything has its own row is much easier to follow. So you get to see it, this looks better too. This is just kind of cluttered. All right, another thing that I see sometimes, and I was guilty of this myself, is when it comes to the input, uh, the text field here, taking the background and making it the same exact color as the background that it's sitting on and trying to only signify an underline. Uh, and that, while it's trendy and looks cool, for some people, they mistaken this for an actual border or a line separator. So they don't actually know, they're like, okay, first name, where am I supposed to click? Some people, you know, they're, they're not very internet savvy. And so you can lose possible leads or contacts or, you know, whatever whatever form they're trying to fill out. So instead, you should always make sure at the minimum that you are defining the actual rectangular area of the form input. So don't do that. Do this instead or something like it. Next up. This one is an, a demonstration of this first name input field being currently active, but there's no indication that it's active, right? It's styled exactly the same as the one that's inactive, and that's not what you want. What you would should have is some way, uh, either through just taking the border bottom property in CSS and making it a different color like this, or what's a more conventional approach is to simply change the border all the way around. And sometimes you can also change the background color. Although I wouldn't make it a real jarring color, maybe just a very subtle change in the background color from where it's at by default. So don't do this, do this instead. All right, next up, I see this a million times. You know, when I do my live UI UX uh, review show, the negative space as it's called, I see this all the time, uh, multiple times per show. And that is completely opting out of having a regular 
label that sits on top of or outside of the, the input field and instead using the placeholder attribute. You don't want to do this. Let me show you why. Let's say for instance, I click in this and I start typing up some stuff and then I maybe I leave or I have a really bad memory. I forget what this field is now. What am I supposed to do? Well, you could say, well, I can just hit the delete key and we can go back um, and then it'll reveal itself, which is true, but some people don't know that. You know, people who aren't developers don't know that. So that's the big UX issue with relying on the placeholder value. Don't do this. So many people do it, it's not even funny. So instead, stick to this. First name, last name here, it's simple. We can understand it. It's not going to go away when you focus on the input field or start, start typing. Uh, so it's just much better, a much, much better approach. And this isn't my subjective opinion. They've done studies on this. All right, next up. Here's a similar one where we have a placeholder value that's kind of instructing the user on uh, the format of this phone number field, right? So this isn't ideal either for the same reasons. When you focus on this input field and you start typing, that goes away, it, it hides, you don't see it. That's the default behavior of the placeholder value, right? So instead, just push it outside in its own HTML element, like in a paragraph element or a span tag. Um, that way it's always gonna be there for them to see, no matter what, all right? So do this, but don't do that. All right, next up is error handling. Always should have error handling in your forms. But this particular way of dealing with uh, error fields used to be a big thing back like in the late 90s and 2000s. I don't see it so much anymore because people have wised up and I'm sure some people still do it. And that is uh, when somebody submits a form, they'll put all of it at the top or at the bottom of the form input field and completely ignore and giving, uh, ignore or they don't give any visual indicators about which field it is outside of just specifying it up here. That's bad for user for user experience. Instead, do this. You know, if it's if, if their first name they didn't specify it, outline it in red perhaps. That's the usual standard convention, and also put underneath the field whatever the error was. All right, here's another example. Um, Right here we have a lot of text and sometimes that may be necessary. And if it's of the type of text uh, that 100%, you know, maybe it's just supplemental information um, and you have a lot of form fields, you wanna save space, which is, should always be the goal, um, do this instead. Put it in a tool tip, people could click it or hover, it will show up right on the side and that way you save space. All right, next up, what is wrong here? It doesn't look too bad, right? But really, we can see the big difference if I show the, the improvement, and that is white space. Make sure you use plenty of white space in your form elements, first and foremost, but also all throughout as it pertains to separating the label with the actual input container. Just see how much better this looks compared to this? It's just jumbled, and I've seen worse. People have even put you know, smaller amounts of white space. It just looks horrendous. It's the, the one of the greatest ways to make your design look like garbage is to have a lack of white space. All right, so here, what do we have here? So we have a bunch of fields, right? This is, in my opinion, too many for this type of use case here. Instead, what you should do is try to compartmentalize or split your form into a multi-step form process like this. So we have kind of like a breadcrumb sort of navigation up here or uh, pagination, pagination. Is it pagination or pagination? I don't know. Anyhow, um, and we can see that we've taken the first last first name, last name, and email address, and then we have a next button, and then we go to the username, password, and confirm password field. Uh, and this off automatically highlights the profile, give them a way to go back, of course, and then complete the sign up. There you go. So try to avoid a lot of form elements as much as possible and make it simple. And the less form elements a person has to fill out, the better. That's the higher uh, conversion rate based on people completing your, uh, your form, whether it be an ordering or a membership, whatever. Now here we have the same exact starting point as the last point that I made. Uh, but what if for some reason, for whatever reason, you don't wanna have a multi-step form? Well. In this case, still try to separate them out with 
white space where it makes sense. So group up items that make sense to group up, like the first name and last name, an email address, and then for the username, password, and confirm password, you can simply just separate with white space. That's a, a, a much better approach so that this, this, doesn't look, this looks much less daunting than this one over here. All right, so those are the primary points. Of course, there's probably there's a lot of other ones, but those are the, bi the, the, the biggest ones that I wanted to emphasize. Now, I wanna take a look at some of the entries I received from last week's UI UX design, the negative space uh, show, and we're gonna take a look at the forms. All right, so I only have a few up here, but these were all submitted with me, uh, within the last week. And I'm, we're gonna see if we can figure out what perhaps is going on wrong here. So the first thing, if I click in here, we can see it is, if I start typing, it goes away. So this person is only relying on the placeholder attribute value to inform the users of it, and he's not using labels. Gotta use labels. Don't use the placeholder. Don't ever do that again. Now, we can also see he is indicating the currently focused input. It's slightly darker, that's fine. He's also putting a border. But still, even though there is a left border here, it's not as bad as the example in my slides where there's only a um, underline, I would still opt to either have it encased all the way around, kind of like up here, or changing the background color maybe to a very slight gray or changing the background here to gray and making this white. Um, I would just do that instead. Next up. So this one doesn't have a form at all. This is somebody's personal portfolio. Listen, if you want somebody to hire you, you wanna give them every way possible to contact you. Just putting your email address and your phone number, it's not enough. Some people may not have their email client set up on their phone. Um, and maybe they just don't wanna use their email client. Provide them with a form as much as possible. All right. Next up, what is wrong with this one? Well, we have several things wrong with it. Um, first off, we can see the text fields are, you can tell there's just, they lack complete white space. Like that looks bad. All right. So is focusing it, at least changing it based on focus, that's okay. But you really want to beef these up, make them bigger, give them more padding, the CSS padding property, property for this input field. There is also a lack of white space right here. Contact form, contact form. What is happening? Why are you repeating these? You don't want to do that. Probably using some sort of plugin and it put its own, don't do that. Separate everything out. Now, one thing you don't want to do in terms of error reporting, this wasn't included in my, my list of uh, things that you should avoid during the slide portion. Um, if you're just focusing here and then you click outside, you shouldn't have it say this is a required field when you would click out. That should only occur when you actually type something, all right? Um, so avoid that. The send button, the call to action, bad call to action. You'd really want a strong, beefier call to action that stands out much more. All right, here's one down here. And again, we're just relying on placeholder values. It goes away, not good. It's also a little bit quite small. Could beat that up with a little bit more uh, padding inside of this element. Here's one, again, these were all just from last week's submissions. Um, we're only relying on placeholder values. Everybody just, they don't want to use labels for some reason. And I understand it makes it more simple, but in the end it's, it's, it's bad UX. So definitely wanna fix that up. Also, I would say with the background here being very, very light blue and this being white, not quite enough contrast uh, discerning the text field from the background itself. Here's another one. This one, this is an unnecessary use case of, I'm gonna make sure I'm not on top of this too much, of the placeholder value. Um, first of all, the placeholder, the placeholder text doesn't really work well with this background color. Um, the, it's, it's like a, it's like a light, it's like an off white. It just doesn't work well, but Outside of that, you shouldn't even use it anyways because you have name up here. Why would you put your name in here? It's unnecessary. We know name is associated with this text field. Get rid of the placeholder value completely because this is self-explanatory. Everybody knows name, 
Well, yeah, that's where my name goes. You don't have to put it twice there. Same thing with email address, your email address, completely unnecessary. So get rid of the placeholder values completely. All right, next up, this is a pretty nice design. I like the colors. Uh, we come down here, we have a real small form, join our emailing list. We see that all the time. This right here, do you really want this to stand out more? There is a very light border. Let me increase this. There's a very light border around email, the, the email you know, input, but you can barely see it. What I would rather do is take this element, give it a background color that's um, a little bit lighter. Wait, that's the border, one second. Background color right here. At least to around there. Now you can actually see it much better than what it was before. Next up. All right, so we have, once again, placeholder values being used here. Now, at least they did use um, and, and signify the fact that this is the currently focused uh, input element. But again, they fail with the placeholder values and not using labels. Oh, and also send message, that should extend all the way out left and right. And then finally, once again here, this is a floating label, all right? So you see what it did there? You click in here, and it is better than just using the placeholder value. But in this case, look how crammed up it is, especially if there's an error filled up here. Again, they were doing that thing where I, let me see if it happens down here. Yeah, if you just click off, there probably should be no, um, there shouldn't be a, an error that shows up. Nonetheless, the way this is, the way this is showing up, it's still not in a good placement. So I would make that a little bit larger um, just because it shrinks down so much. Also, there's no padding on the left portion of this. I would push that padding at least to where this email part starts. And also the call to action is almost looks like another input field. You want that to stand out on its own like this primary blue color right here. All right, everybody. So hopefully for those of you who suck at form design, which is probably 95% of you, you're gonna be better now. You're not gonna suck anymore if you take and you heed my advice and put it to good use. All right, so make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.